one of our most frequently asked questions is when should I bring my puppy in for grooming? And the answer is as soon as possible. <laughs> After they've had all their vaccinations, they are good to go. And it's really important to get them into the grooming world as quickly as possible so that they can have a good association with it, purely because we'll start it slowly. <laughs> Smelling nice? We offer three sessions and they come for a few hours a day and they play and <laughs> we like to pack them with loads of puppies in so that they all get together at the same time. What we're going to show you now is some of our table training. Okay, so now we're going to introduce them to the table one by one and let them sniff a few tools and play around on the table for a little bit with some treats. So who's first? So, treats at the ready. Pop them on his table. Oh, you're excited too. So, introducing the brush. And then I'm just going to slowly brush him. Good boy. Good boy, Taka. I'm going to let him be curious about it. I do recommend brushing at home, of course. And I do recommend playing with the feet a lot. Try to desensitize the feet touching and not too much you don't want them to ever hate anything when you're just like sitting at home watching tv have them up on the sofa if they're allowed or on the floor and just have a brush and brush away so we do have something called a puppy brush which is this so this puppy brush the bristles are not strong at all they're not wiry however as well as as good as this is as an association um, it's not going to do anything. So having this as your main brush is not good enough. So we do recommend buying one of these. And now you don't want to press too hard at all at any point. So these are strong. These are strong. But you do want to brush to the skin as well. But it's just like brushing our own hand, say. So if I brush in one spot for a long time, I'm going to get sore. And it's exactly the same with them. So what we do when we brush, is we move off uh, uh, the brush around and you can see that I'm not gonna become sore. So what I'm gonna do now is, ew, you can be next, Ludo. So what I'm gonna do now is, um, I wanna slowly introduce the hairdryer to Taco while he's on the table. And what I'm gonna do is, you saw that his head moved, it's because I put my fingers underneath and I made a different sound. When it goes on them or when it hits the table, or when it hits my brush, they're gonna hear this, which is a change and it can shock them, especially if it's so close. All right, so I've got my treat in my hand and I'm gonna slowly bring the dryer to him. Good boy, Tato. And just praise, loads of praise, brushing. Good boy, Baba. Okay, so another little treat for Mr. Tato. And then I'm gonna say that his first introduction to the table, the hair dryer and the brushing was very good. So I'm gonna take him down, give him a little break, and then later on I'm gonna pop him back up as well, and then we'll try the scissors. <laughs> We've got Otis and Ari and they're playing too much, so I don't wanna break up the playtime. <laughs> so I'm gonna bring Ludo up for his table training, and you seem quite keen on it, don't you, baby? Let's get you up. Okay, so we're gonna do exactly the same thing with Ludo as we did with Taco. Introduce the brushing. Now he's got lovely long hair. I'm trying to feel for any knots, but I don't think there are any. His parents are doing a fantastic job at brushing and keeping him not free at home. So with longer haired dogs, the brush will obviously pull the hair and the skin. So a way to support is to gently hold some hair, so no skin, you don't grab any skin. So gently hold the hair so the skin is taut. As you can see, like there's no tension really. And I'm just going to brush, otherwise it'll be like this, which isn't, you know, it's not very comfortable, especially if they have knots. If you have an adult dog that's not used to grooming or brushing, like you just gotta take it back to basics. 
and you just got to start exactly the same way as you're introducing it to a puppy, the same way to an adult dog. Um, I would definitely recommend it. So the curiosity, like I'm not going to stop him. We want him to be curious. We want him to sniff around. We want him to be comfortable with everything that's going up on here on the table. So got my comb. I'm going to introduce it to him. Let him smell. I'm going to pop it on the table. Same way, different width. Because if I have a dog that's got a really thick coat, then I'm most likely going to use one of these because these are too thin. So when purchasing a comb as well, I just want to add, it's really good to have an area where you've got your thin teeth and then your wider teeth. A comb like this, I wouldn't really recommend for an owner just because it's not really going to get the knots out unless it's specifically recommended by myself or your groomer. So, introducing the comb. It's the same way as doing the brush. So you're going to hold the hair so that the skin is taut. I'm just going to gently, good boy Ludo, comb through. Now combing is very important in the grooming process. Because with the brushing, as you see, like I brush this area but there's a little knot there. I wouldn't have found that if I hadn't have brushed him, uh, combed him, sorry. So with this knot, I'm actually going to get it out. I'm going to gently tackle it and then I'm going to raise it from the skin as well I'm going to have it on my finger and I'm going to brush it out that way so that way I'm pressing on my hand rather than the dog's skin so as you can see like how gently I brushed out that knot and now the uh, knot has gone good boy Ludo this is Otis <laughs> oh he's nibbling my ear <laughs> A good boy. He's a good boy. What's this I've got? Aww, so handsome. So this is a cocker spaniel. And with cocker spaniels, their ears and their feet suck up the water. <laughs> it takes forever to dry and they tend to get knots in between the toes as well because of the heavy set that they have. Okay, so we're gonna go through all the steps as well and then we're also gonna introduce some scissoring to his feet so you can see how I introduce the scissors to a dog, a puppy. Alrighty, so now I'm going to introduce some scissoring. I'm going to take out thinner and a straight scissor. A good boy, he's a good boy. So I've got uh, short scissors, specifically for smaller dogs and puppies. Some more treaty roos in you. What I'm gonna do when I first introduce scissors is obviously I hold the scissor in my hand like this. And I let him sniff. Good boy. Aww. So I'm gonna take his paw. Boy. I'm going to play, put the scissor across it, like so, then I'm going to open, I mean the dogs are a great distraction. Good boy. So dogs, they will always be curious um, with what you're doing, like they always want to know what you're doing. <laughs> There's a riot going on down here. <laughs> they have so much space, but they want to play around the table. It's always the way, isn't it? Okay, so he's going to lie down. So dogs are always going to be curious about what you're doing. They're always going to want to see what you're doing, you know, until... Even adults at the same time, I, I find they're always curious to what, what you're doing, especially around their feet. So if they... If you do have a curious dog who's sniffing, who wants to see what you're doing, um, then always kind of what I do is I block my hand from their face because obviously you are working with sharp tools. I'm going to work around here. Good boy, Otis. Just gently. Good boy. And he's not doing a little tap dance. Good boy. Here's it. Little face looks. I know, it's fun time. They haven't, their energy hasn't depleted yet, which is wild. <laughs> so good boy, yeah? You enjoyed that? 
and then lower the cheeks again. Touch me, touch me, touch me. So gentle. That's it. I'm gonna put them on the floor now. So now it's Ari's turn. Look at his face. Is it time for you? Is it time for you? from Spain. Come on, baby. <laughs> Here we go. Good boy. So what we're going to do with Ari, um, I'm going to show how I introduce the clippers because he's a dog that's going to be clipped. So I have my high niggers. And what I do is I let him sniff. There's no blade, no nothing on it. Not interested, which is actually really good. I'm gonna turn it on. So I'm gonna hold him. He just looks at it. And then what I do is I put it on him. And I just stroke it. Good boy. So I'm just putting it around just so that they can feel the vibrations a bit more through the feet. Putting it around here. You just gotta do everything like so, so slow. So gentle because if it was my first time, I think I'd be pretty shocked about it too. <laughs> so Ludo has just been collected. Um, so Ari's actually gonna stay with us a little bit longer than um, the rest of the doggy. So we're gonna get Ari back on the table for some more playtime and training. I'm just gonna brush out Taco's face a little bit. I wanna get his uh, face a bit neater. <laughs> okay, so he's chosen to lie down and I'm gonna allow him to. Of course, this is why we have the puppy introduction and this is why we want puppies to come in because we want them to feel relaxed on the grooming table. If this was an immediate grooming session, if his owners didn't book him in for a puppy intro, I wouldn't be able to do this. I would have to groom him for the owners they are paying. Obviously to a certain point I'm not gonna force the dog to do something that he doesn't want to do but I would try harder um, and I would encourage it a lot quicker in such a short space of time. So if your groomers do offer puppy intro 100% go for it. It's a great way to introduce your dog to the whole thing that's it's going to be needed for their whole life. It's something you, you're going to want to enjoy it. Put it nice and gentle. Wash out his little face. <laughs> Sorry, my squeal didn't allow. Oh, yeah. So it's collection time for Taco. And he's had a lovely morning here. So we're just going to get him dressed and ready for his owners to clean him. Taco has just been collected as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop Ari back on the table. He seems much calmer and relaxed now. We didn't really want to separate him from playing. So his friend is still here. So as he um, is going to be on the table and then welcome back his friend as well. So it still has playtime and groom time. I'm going to do your face. I'm going to do your face. your beautiful eyes. He's very tired. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? It's a clever boy. And this is actually still how I introduce uh, the dryer to all the dogs. Even still to this day, I allow them to hear the sound before I put it on them. Because, you know, you just can't explain. <laughs> so, it's the best way to get them used to it. Even adult dogs. Oh, my thumb! <laughs> so I'm going to slowly go towards his head because that's where he's a little bit cautious. And you see, whenever he's interested or whenever he's curious as, as to what I'm doing, I will show him what I'm doing. You know, I'll show him the brush and, I mean, feed the curiosity. For them to understand what's going on, you have to let them know what's going on. Isn't it, mister? So now I'm going to introduce this brush and I'm going to go on his face with it. I want him to sit down. 
So again, from far away, because now I'm going to the front of him. That's it, Ari, well done. I mean, the playtime for the good hours in the morning really, really helps. So I've introduced the next brush, the harder, wiry teeth one, tooth one, um, for the head, but I'm going in the back of the head, not the face just yet, and his ears. He's not minding at all. Really nice light pressure. He hasn't got any knots at all. Good boy. So now I'm gonna go this one again. Nice, you relaxed, huh? Yeah. That's it, perfect. Really want them to lie down on the table. Now, I don't know if other groomers might discourage lying on the table purely because, you know, when we are grooming dogs, we need them to stand up so we can get everywhere. But me personally, I find it a compliment when the dog is relaxed on the table so much that he chooses to lie down or sleep. It's showing trust, showing comfort, and he's enjoying his time. And that's what, I mean, I've said it a million times, but that's the most important thing. A dog enjoying their groom is pleasant for the groomer and the dog. Okay, so that is all for today for our first video on puppy intro. And as you can see, we have a pleasant pup pup on our grooming table. Having fun, Mister? <laughs> so let us know if you want to see more of our intro pack for our puppies, and we'll see you on the next video.